Thank you very much. And happy anniversary, by the way. We're going to talk about that a little later. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. It must be nearly 20 years ago now that I was called upon to do a funeral for one of our members who grew up and lived in Minneapolis for most of his life, and the funeral was going to be there in a funeral home down on Hennepin Avenue. And uh, when I got up that morning to go down for that service, it, there was a horrible snowstorm. It was snowing and blowing and sleet, and there were warnings on the radio not to be on the roads, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a challenging experience today just to get there. My personality type normally tells me to be early, to be ready, be prepared. It's just the way I am. If I'm going to be late for something, I'd rather just not show up at all. So on this particular day, I knew that I really had to get an early start in order to get there early. <laughs> so I hit the road, and uh, actually the roads were horrible, and there wasn't much traffic, but actually the drive went fairly well. And when I pulled into the parking lot at the funeral home, I, I realized I was three and a half hours early. <laughs> I walked in the door, and the, the funeral director met me at the door, and he said, oh, pastor, are we ever glad to see you? We wondered if you would make it. He said, but you look a little tired, and you look a little stressed. So I have an idea. He said, just come with me. So we walked down this long hallway, and then down a long flight of steps, we kept walking. I noticed off to the right there was a big casket display room there. Down another hallway, and at the end of the hallway, he opened the door. And in this small room, it was very much like a living room. There was a full-size couch, a table and a lamp, and a private bathroom. And he said, I think it would be a really nice idea if you just kind of took it easy for a while and rested. And he asked me what my favorite beverage was, and I said, Diet Coke. He said, I'll be right back. He left and came back in two minutes with a big pillow under one arm, and he had a bottle of Diet Coke and a glass of ice, and he said, I think what you should do is take your shoes off and just lay down on this couch with this really nice pillow and have some Diet Coke, and take a nap. And he said, don't worry, I'll come back in plenty of time to wake you up so you can greet the family when they get here. Just take a nap. Well, you have to realize, for one thing, I was wearing a dark suit. It was either dark navy blue or black. And I looked at him and I said, are you serious? You want me to take my shoes off and lay down on this pillow? I said, what if you mistaken me for a dead person. <laughs> and then he smiled and said, I know you're a Lutheran clergyman, but believe me, I won't mistake in you for a dead person. <laughs> so we had a good laugh about that. But that was an incredible experience of hospitality. I felt so welcomed. I felt so appreciated and needed and they took care of my every need. It was incredible. And I did take a nap, and he did wake me up, and the, the whole thing went very well. I thought about that experience when I read the Gospel for today. Jesus said, um, if you welcome me, you welcome he who sends me. It, this may be the hallmark characteristic of the Christian faith being able to welcome people. Or the word we often use is hospitality. In the way that we conduct our individual Christian lives and in the way that we conduct our affairs as a church, as a congregation, there may be nothing else more important than this whole concept of how we welcome people, of how we express hospitality, how we open our doors and open our arms to everyone. For a number of years, the ELCA has touted this wonderful phrase, the welcome place. And local congregations have taken that up as well. That's one of the things I just love about our church. We are the welcome place. 
Everyone is welcome here. People come in and we welcome them. We don't ask a lot of questions. We don't have them fill out a doctrinal statement before they walk through the door. If you show up, you are welcome here. I have to tell you, you know, every Sunday we, we try to make it clear that we practice open communion at Trinity. And I was a little surprised what came out of my mouth last Sunday. That happens every once in a while. <laughs> I, I started out like normal. I said, here at Trinity we practice open communion because, and here was the surprise, I said, because this is the Lord's Supper. That says it all. This isn't Trinity Supper. This isn't the Lutheran Supper. This isn't the Protestant Supper. This is the Lord's Supper. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's Supper. I think about our congregation and how far we've come through these hundred and almost 130 years now of becoming the welcome place. We've done so well to take down barriers. I think Trinity is known as a friendly church. We hear this all the time from our new member groups every spring and every fall. We came to Trinity and felt so welcomed. It's easy to join here. It's, it's easy to become part of this faith community. And over the last um, 10 to 20 years, we've done many things to remove physical barriers so that all kinds of people may feel welcome. Uh, it's fully handicapped accessible now. You can get anywhere in the building in a wheelchair. Uh, we've done a lot to improve uh, our sound system, so even hearing impaired people have the ability to wear a device or to hear. There was a guest pastor in our church two weeks ago, and after the wedding she did, she was just amazed that she could hear herself talk and that people could hear her speak. Uh, we've done things with uh, the screen so that vision-impaired people can participate. So we've done many things right to be a welcome place for all people. One of the things we're thrilled about right now is, is our handicapped bus and how we can go pick people up every week and bring them to church. It's part of being a hospitable congregation. But I think there's always room for improvement, too. Um, I'm going to share a new thought with you today. We are so focused sometimes on the importance of getting visitors here. And we've talked a lot about making invitation, inviting people to worship. On Wednesday night, I shared with the group that years ago we did an Invite a Friend Sunday. And uh, we thought we could double our attendance for one Sunday. And my thinking was there would be some residual people that would keep coming after that event. And so we promoted it, we wrote letters about it, we put up posters, it was in the newsletter bulletin, and for three, four Sundays in a row I acted it out here in front. Here's how you do this. You go to your neighbor and tell them who you are and you invite them to church. We were just anticipating a fantastic experience. So that day finally arrived, and guess what happened? Our attendance went down by a hundred. I couldn't figure out, what did we do wrong? And finally, someone confessed, well, Pastor, we, we just couldn't get a commitment from anybody to come with us to church that day, and we were too embarrassed to show up without a visitor with us. So we stayed home. <laughs> and I thought only in a Lutheran church would, on Bring a Friend Sunday, would our attendance go down. <laughs> you know, it's not in our Lutheran DNA to go out and knock on doors and invite people cold to come to worship. It's not part of our characteristic to go downtown and stand on the corner and hand out brochures and pamphlets and say, you know, come to worship with us and be part of our, our faith community. It's just not how we do things like that. A couple years a study was done. This is absolutely serious doing a survey and study on how Lutherans invite people they don't know to worship. And the bottom line of that study is on average, the Lutheran invites someone they don't know to worship once every 50 years. <laughs> that means if you're about 25, 30 years old 
and you want to invite more than one person to church in your lifetime, you better get busy. <laughs> That's incredible to me. And so we focus so much of our attention on, well, how do we get a visitor here? How do we get visitors to come and try us out? And I'm, I'm pretty convinced at this point that that's the wrong question. There's never a lack of visitors. Wednesday night we had 21 people here and I was telling all of this and lo and behold, there was a visitor here Wednesday night. She just moved into town from Minneapolis looking for a church. Virtually every Sunday there are visitors here. People come to church. They read about us online at our website. They hear about it on the radio or television. Or they see our signs. Or they stop down at the Chamber of Commerce rest area. We have pamphlets and brochures there, too. We've got the word out everywhere. So there are always visitors around. And I'm suggesting today that the most important visit may not be the first visit to this church. I think the most important visit is the second visit. Are they going to come back? Did what they experienced the first time touch their lives in such a way, in such a welcoming way, that they want to come back? That's the crucial question. And I think for those of us who are um, evangelically challenged, which is ironic because we are the evangelical Lutheran Church in America, it may not be so much what we do. It may rather be who we are. What I am getting at is it may not be so much going out there and literally asking somebody cold to come to worship. But maybe what most of us can do is, and this is a shock, be joyful <laughs> about your faith. Christian people that have a love of God in their life are joyful people. It makes us happy together as God's people. We know who we are. We know whose we are. We know what the future holds. This fills us with joy. And this is what people experience when they come to church here. Joy is our outreach. Joy is our witness. Joy is our hospitality. And so just be who you are and find ways to express that happiness and joy that comes to us in our faith by knowing who Jesus is, that God loves us, that we are accepted. No matter who we are or where we've been, God's arms embrace us. And we, in turn, embrace everyone who comes to us. God bless us in that life of hospitality. Amen. Please stand and we will sing our hymn of the day.